I'm yours for all time And I'll give you anything that I ever saw But that reminds me of Acts 27 and 28. You know that you know that account of a cruise? Paul took a cruise. Paul was taking a cruise to Rome as a prisoner. And do you know the one who controls even the sea and the wind obey? His name is Jesus. Even the sea and the wind obey him. So Paul is going to Rome. That's the plan. I'm going to go to Rome and stand before. That wasn't God's plan. It wasn't God's plan. You know why? Because on the Isle of Malta, there was somebody whose name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life who had yet to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So God said, who can I send? They said, well, Paul's on their way in that direction. So God raised up a storm, a storm. And I've been caught in a hurricane at sea. I know what storms are like. I don't think it was anything like that storm. That storm, they all just they despaired of life, except for the fact that Paul stood there and said, God has spoken to me. If we do what's right, nobody will perish. Can God sink a ship just to save one soul? I'm asking you a question. I mean, I'm serious. What is the worth of a soul? What is the worth of one person? I, I believe that if there was only one person, if I was the only person, Jesus still would have gone to the cross and died for me. That's how precious it is. So yes, God brought up a storm that was unbelievable, and that ship was shipwrecked, and they landed on Malta, and when they got to Malta, uh, do you, all, I mean, you may all know this account in Acts 27, the, the, all these guys are coming out of the water, shipwrecked, coming up onto the island, and they're cold, so they start gathering sticks and everything to make a fire. And as Paul is gathering sticks, a, a viper comes out and pow, grabs onto him. And all the people around saying, he's dead. That's a paraphrase. That's a modern translation. They say, he, that, that, that sucker is dead. Because they knew it was a poisonous snake. Meanwhile, Paul shakes it loose and keeps on going. That's how troubled he was. That's how concerned he was. God said he was going to get to Rome. Paul believed him. Paul believed that God watches over his word to perform it. So he wasn't shaken by a silly little viper. He shook it off and kept on going. You know what he didn't do? He didn't moan, grumble, and complain. He didn't fall on his face and start crying out to God, Oh God, what am I going to do? He didn't, call, he didn't even call for the other believers on the ship and say, Let's have a prayer meeting. He just kept, shook it loose and kept on going. Is there not something there to instruct? Whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction. Is there not something there to instruct us? That when things go wrong in our life, we can just shake it off and keep on going, praising the Lord? So then, a man was healed by Paul, and then the word of God spread through Malta. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. This is, not a, this is not a test, but I think we need to examine ourselves. I think we need to test ourselves and see where we are. You look at the life of Paul. Look at the things he went through. Beaten times without number, shipwrecked. I mean, think of all of the things that happened to him, right? You know what he said? In, in Romans 5, he said, not only this, but we exalt in our tribulations. Do you complain about your tribulations or do you exalt in your tribulations? James said, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. James 1, 2. When things go wrong, do you consider it joy? You do if you can trust your father and know that he's in control and you're in the palm of his hand where no man can snatch you out. You do if you believe that he's watching over you. You do if you believe that he can deliver you from any situation. And if he doesn't, it's because that's not the part of the plan. The plan is to get you someplace better. Ask Stephen, stoned to death. Peter said, in this you greatly rejoice, 
even though now for a little while, if necessary, you've been distressed by various trials. Are we Bible-believing Christians? You can tell me you are. You can say what you want. You can tell me about how many times you go to church. You can tell me about how much you tithe. But let me see you in a trial and tribulation situation and see how you respond. Do you give thanks? Do you trust God? Do you thank God for the situation? Knowing that God is at work, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. He is in control. Nothing is going on in your life that He didn't allow to go on in your life. And if He allowed it to go on, He has purpose for it. We know, we know that God causes all things to work together for good. For those who love Him and are called according to His, His purpose, not our purpose. So if we know that, if we're Bible-believing and we know that God causes all, you know what? That sets us free. We don't have to think about our worry or worry about our situation. Now we can devote ourselves to saying, Lord, what's in this for you? How can you be glorified in this situation? And that should be the attitude of a righteous person. That should be the attitude of a person who knows that they are in the hand of a loving God where no man can snatch them out. And if that doesn't excite you, excuse me. Amen. Father, I pray that we would have that same attitude that Paul had, that we would have that same attitude that James had, that we would be like Peter, that we would be faithful and know that no promise that you have promised has failed to come to pass, that you love us beyond our understanding, that you loved us enough to put your son Jesus Christ on that cross. There is no good thing that you would withhold from us, but there is more to it than we know because you are working your pleasure. You are leading us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Help us, Lord God, to have a focus on you that removes our focus on ourselves. Help us, Lord, to know you and love you more so that we can see and be more of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will praise his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will praise, I will praise his name. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. This time for and forevermore, I will bless my holy Lord. From this time for and forevermore, I will bless, I will bless.